prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill will grow. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has possibly mentioned this a few times, but it serves as an act of In 2005, East London won the bid for the 2012 uh, Olympics. Uh, in preparation for this event, there was big investment into the East End of London. Infrastructure investment, improved transportation, uh, renovation, housing development, it attracted new businesses, commercial opportunities, and uh, uh, East London's got to be like the brand of East London that it once was. This great measure, or a great measure of this investment to prepare for the Olympic Games, uh, was also indicated in the increase of the average house price in London Borough of Newham. For the average house price left by 429%, that's the increase. If you imagine you own a house, your house in two years will be 429%. And the start of the century, the house in London was about 75k. Uh, now it's around 3 and them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. Uh, there's a preparation in those Levites that are taking place uh, before they enter into that uh, place of, serv of, of serving. Uh, the, apostles, uh, the apostles had three years uh, with Jesus. He was discipling them. He was preparing them for when he would ascend to the uh, Father and they would begin to lead uh, the church. Uh, in the creation account, Genesis 1 and verse 2, the Bible says, the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of 
of the waters. That word hovering could also be interpreted the word brood, where we get the word, you know, broody, uh, when a woman wants to have a child. And so here's the whole idea. Before a word is spoken, the spirit is moving over the face of the dirt. It's almost like there's a preparation that is taking place uh, before creation. Jesus said to his disciples in John 14 and verse 3, And I go to prepare a place for you. I will soon come again and receive you to myself, uh, that where I am, there you may be also when we concern when we think concerning his return the scripture gives us signs of the times and there's things that are happening in the earth this is preparation for his return Matthew 23 verse 33 so you also when you see all these things know that it is near at the doors concerning his birth and the ministry of Christ you could say that all the events of scripture in the Old Testament were like a preparation for the coming of the Messiah. Luke 24 verse 44, then he said to them, these are the words I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. He's saying everything from Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, he said it was pointing to me all that God was doing in the earth uh, was for the coming of the Messiah our text speaks about a voice crying in the wilderness before the ministry of Christ John the Baptist's ministry was preparing the way the first few words or verses out of the gospel of Mark uh, are actually our text, Isaiah 40, verse 3 to 5. I think about this. Here's the coming, the ushering in of the Messiah's ministry. And to prepare the way, God would use a voice <laughs> crying out in the wilderness. I'm definitely going to lose that, by the way, man. Because then it's hard not to just start singing along to this song. So my kids are practicing these songs, so these songs are in my head. Okay. <laughs> and so this is a theme think about this before, before his ministry there's a voice crying in the wilderness before his ministry there's one who is speaking the word of God this is a theme in scripture prior to God often moving in an awesome and in a powerful way there would often be a messenger there would often be a prophet who would go before it. Ezekiel has that vision in the valley of dry bones uh, before God brings them together. Before he raises the army, what does he say? He says prophesy. It's almost like he's preparing the way for what God is about to, to do. Many of God's judgments in the earth came after the declarations and the proclaimings uh, of his prophets. Uh, Moses is sent down to Egypt to confront Pharaoh and say, let my people go. A word is declared and then God begins to show signs uh, and wonders. Uh, Jonah goes down to Nineveh. He proclaims the word of the, of the Lord because God was about to judge uh, that um, city. It's the same thing with Jeremiah with the children of Israel. He says, I sent my prophets daily. He's going to do something, but there's a voice prior to it happening. I believe Noah prepared for the flood in two ways. The building of the ark and the preaching to the people. The Bible says he was a preacher of righteousness. The ark was built to withstand the flood waters. The preaching was for the people to escape them. God made it so that before he would be revealed... Before he would begin to move with signs and wonders and miracles and healings, uh, a preacher would go and prepare the way. The prophet Isaiah, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in our text, uh, speaks concerning the coming Messiah, of the coming Messiah. God coming in the likeness of man. And what prepares his way? A voice crying in the wilderness. We need preachers, church. We need preachers who would prepare the way. Forerunners, town criers, heralds, Holy Ghost filled preaching. Not TED talking, not university, university lecturing, not sharing. I was at this minister's gathering and they were like, Leon's going to share today. I told them, I don't share. 
I preach. They know me, so they just they knew it was a joke. It wasn't a, a thing. And I don't know about sharing. We're come and share something. I ain't share. I'm gonna preach the word of God to you. I don't know about that. I was raised on good, solid Bible preaching. The late Pastor Wayman Mitchell said, "We are a preaching fellowship, and we are. We preach on the street." Preach at the concert, preach at the drama, preach at the poetry night, preach at your wedding, preach at your baby dedication, preach at your funeral. There always will be preaching. We preach to prepare the way. Paul says to Timothy, preach the word in season and out of season. The main thrust behind John the Baptist's ministry was he was a voice crying in the wilderness. He was a preacher. He was a bad boy preacher. Because if I go into a forest and start preaching, I don't know if people are going to go out there to hear it. But John's in the wilderness preaching and people are like, can you hear, what's he talking about? What's that? Do you hear that voice? And then crowds are coming. John is the original street preacher, man. Declaring the word of God. Preparing the way. Matthew 24 verse 14 and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations and then the end will come it's the preparation isn't it what happens before the end comes the word is preached throughout the entire world a voice comes crying in the wilderness to do what prepare the way of the Lord now here's the thing Preaching demands a response. It demands a response. Uh, John's message when he was preaching was what? To repent. Matthew 3 verse 1 to 2. In those days John came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The preaching of the word demands a response. It's not just the giving of information. It, dem it demands a response. Now, how one responds, that's totally up to them. Some people will harden their hearts to the word. Some people will actually enjoy the word, but they will not apply the word. They hear, but they do not do. Ezekiel 33, verse 32. I, I love this scripture. It's like God's giving Ezekiel a heads up. Because Ezekiel's preaching, and people love his preaching. They're like, man, this brother can preach. And so God says, like, come, come, come here. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what's really going on. He says, indeed you are to them as a very lovely song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear your words, but they do not do them. He's like, Ezekiel, let me tell you something. I see them all the time. And they ain't doing a word you're saying, you know. Some will actually hear the word, receive it, receive the implied word of God, and will bear its fruit. Not everyone responds the same way to the same message. Some people will pick up stones and want to stone you. Others will cry out, what can a man do to be saved? Here's the thing. If the voice in the wilderness prepares the way and his means is to preach, then how one responds will determine how prepared they are. Matthew 24, 42 to 43. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. He says, what you don't want to be, you don't know the time I'm coming. But he says, what you don't want to be is unprepared. So he says, watch therefore. He says, I'm giving you the signs of the times. He said, you better respond to this right. Because if you respond to it right, you'll be prepared for that hour. But if you don't, you will be unprepared. He speaks about the parable of the five wise and the five foolish virgins. The difference between them, ones were, some were prepared and some were or not. The question is, what is our response to the voice crying in the wilderness? What is our response to the preaching of the word? will determine how prepared we are for what God will want to do in our lives. And so, we go back to our text and look at verse 4. 
This is the preparation. Watch it. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill brought low. Crooked places made straight and rough places made smooth. Valleys exalted. Mountains and hills brought low. Crooked places made straight and the rough made smooth. You know what preparation looks like? It looks like some serious landscaping, isn't it? Think about that. There's valley, the valleys. We're going to bring them up, so we're going to fill them up. There's some mountain. We're going to level them out, take out all these mountains and stuff like that. There's some crooked place. We're going to make it straight. And where there's all rough terrain, we're going to make it smooth. It's landscaping. This is the preparation that the voice of the uh, voice crying in the wilderness is going to do. Let's look at them. Valleys exalted. Low places are lifted up. This is the power and the influence of the preaching of the word of God. That you can be in a low place. That you could be in a place of condemnation. You could be in the pit of regret. You could be in the miry clay of low self-esteem and low confidence. And a word of encouragement. A word of faith and exaltation can lift you. There's been times where I felt discouraged and I've listened to the word of God preach and it has lifted me out of that discouragement. Oh, a spoken word in due season, how good it is, the Bible says. Uh, the angel, think about it, comes to Gideon and he sees himself as insignificant. He is hiding and he's like he gives him a, a sermon, mighty man of valor. It's a short sermon. But he says, you are a mighty man of valor. Of valor. He's in a lone place, uh, but the angel, angel means messenger, came to give him a word to prepare him for what God was going to do for his life. This is how ordinary people can actually believe God, they can do something for God. You think about that, man. Yeah. Bible says not many wise, man, not many noble. <laughs> Why? Because God raises them up. They're listening to words of hope. They're listening to words of vision, words of destiny. God wants to use your life. You can go. You can reach the name. They're hearing this. They're sitting in the Bible. Call. They're listening to this and it's lifting them up. Prior to them, oh, I couldn't do nothing for God. But it's because of the way they're responding to it. The valleys are lifted, are lifted up. The other kind of landscaping, it says, is the high places are brought low. And so this is kind of the complete opposite. Because the reality is some people, they need lifting up. Some people, they need bringing down to earth. Because many times we can. After a while, see, it's almost, almost like we come to God at times and we, oh man, I don't know, man. And I don't really know my word. And I see people and they look so refined in their lives. And could God ever use me? And other, but then God starts to raise you up, man. And then you, then you, just, get, you just get too high. That's the problem. <laughs> and so then he has to bring another word to, to bring you down. Because we can become full of pride. We spoke about this a week ago on a Sunday night. We can become arrogant. We can become conceited. We can become full of self-righteousness. And the problem with that terrain is there's too much of self in the way. For God to really move through the individual's life. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace uh, to the humble. It is better to look into the mirror of the word of God and humble yourself than be humbled. Uh, there's a difference between the two, man. Humbling self and being humbled. I'd rather just hear the word of God, be convicted, and humble myself on an author. The mountains are brought low. But here's another consideration. I was thinking about this. That it was in the high places and on the hills that in ancient times, men would go and worship and sacrifice to other gods and other idols. They go up in high places. And often there are idols, cares of this world that are on hills and mountaintops in our lives. They're the forms that choke the word of God from bearing any fruit, any application of his word. And so many would not surrender themselves to God. Many would not make themselves available to God because there's too many high places in their lives with things that shouldn't be so high. There's things that are way too valuable. And, and many times, God ain't even on the hill or even on the mountain. But through the preaching of the word of God, God will confront these things. And he's like, I'm not first in your life. This is first. This is your God. This is what you worship. This is what you sacrifice to. The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God first. 
The Bible says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. You guys ain't trying to hear preaching today. This is what, it addresses these things. Why? Because he's trying to prepare the way. I want to do something in and through your life, but not with all these idols, man. Temporal things should not have such a high standing in our lives as believers. He wants to exalt the valleys. Make you believe again. Or make you believe for the first time. God can use my life. But he also wants the high places brought low. He doesn't want us to be so conceited and so prideful or never let's have all these other things on high hills. Here's the next thing he says. He makes the crooked ways straight. He makes the crooked straight. There's an old phrase that someone who is reformed would say. They say, I'm on the straight and narrow. Which means they're no longer about their crooked ways. They're no longer a crook. Up to no good. Scheming. Paul tells Timothy that a part of preaching, remember that scripture I referenced, preach in and out of the sea. Part of it, yeah, there's part of it that's exalting, but the other part is rebuke. Under the preaching of the word, the Holy Spirit will convict of sin. Some people, you can live with your sin all week. And then you're like, man, I don't know if I want to go to church this morning. Because <laughs> the Holy Spirit will get a hold of your heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, The word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of the soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the force and intents of the heart. The word of God is going to call it out for what it is. God sanctifies by his word. He'll touch things. He'll address things. He'll identify and highlight things. He will call things out for what the, they are. You know what the purpose is? To make the crooked straight. That's it. like you shouldn't be doing. That's disobedience. That's it. It's to make the crooked straight. L -l -l Consider Paul. Paul's writing to the church in Ephesus. Ephesians 5.1.6 says, Therefore be imitators of God as their children. That's a sermon all in itself. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet swelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for the saints. Neither filthiness, I wonder what he was really speaking about there, <laughs> nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Because these things, because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of this. Earth. Calling it out. They're reading this. This, is, this. this would be read out to the church, right? And he's just like, we, we're going to deal with it. We're going to make those crooked places straight. The valleys are exalted. The mountains and the hills are brought low. The crooked ways are made straight. And what else does it say? That the rough is made smooth. There's a leveling out. Leveling out. You know what that speaks of? It speaks of consistency. That's what it speaks of. It's seamless. It, it's no longer being strong in one area of my walk, but in another area, well, let's just not talk about it. No, it says make the whole place level. No high hair and low hair, and then high hair and then low hair. Consistency. Jesus should be Lord over every area of my life. Amen. I don't, it's not about being disobedient in one area, but in other areas, you are obedient. I'm unsubmitted in this, but I'm submitted in regarding to this. Spiritual concerning these things, uh, but I'm very carnal concerning these other things. Inconsistency will undermine any spiritual progress. You look at the qualifications for leadership in 1 Timothy 3. It addresses his behavior as well as his marital home, as well as his handling of money, as well as his ability to teach, as well as his parenting, as well as his hospitality, as well as his ministry. Go read it yourself. He says, Paul, you ain't looking for no rough terrain. And now that's not even a person in leadership. This is what qualifies one to be selected for. He says, yeah, he's spiritual here, but how's his marriage? But how's his children? 
for how's his money. This is it. You can go and study it. He's saying it's got it's to be leveled out. It's Jesus Lord over all. Paul said to the church in Ephesus, I preach the whole counsel of God to you. Why? Because he wants them to be consistent. I'm not just preaching to you one aspect. I'm going to preach to you everything. If I tell you about hell, I'm going to tell you about heaven. If I'm going to tell you about sin, I'm going to tell you about um, righteousness. If I'm going to tell you about guilt, I'm going to tell you about the forgiveness of God. The, the, whole, the whole thing. Rough places made smooth. What's the purpose of all this? To make the way straight for the Lord. What, what, what is the means? A voice in the wilderness. One is preaching and he's declaring. And there's some people who are hearing it. And yeah, man, I believe in God, man. God can use my life. Man, if he can use John, he can use me. John will be looking crazy, man. God, inspired, right? Look at this. We ain't seen nothing like that. Other people here, these Pharisees and stuff, man, they man, man, have to humble themselves, man. Realize, man, we need to repent, man. Others living in sin, they realize, man, I can't be just living this and just talking about Yahweh. I need to, I need to get these crooked ways straight before God. Others, there's places where you're doing good, but it, and these things are being highlighted, and the way is being made straight. His preparation for him moving and doing a great thing. It's a shifting of the landscape. Can God shift the landscape of your life? Could it be that God, through the ministry of his word, his entire purpose was to make the way straight for what he would do in and through your life? When we're fighting it, no, I want to hear what you're saying, no, 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 all of that. But he's like, no, I'm actually trying to do something in you because I'm trying to make the way straight for what I want to do through your life. If our response is not right, and this ain't just a sermon like, oh, well, we pastor, you preach a sermon that we all should listen to every week. Man, I get many people come through this church, and I will next year as well. I believe God will speak through them. Minister, many times, actually, I've, it's been crazy at times. Guys have been preaching almost the same thing. Different guys, man. Forgiveness, 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 forgiveness. I'm like, man, <laughs> we need to forgive, man. <laughs> anyway, let me move on. If our response is not right, you know what happens? The hindrances remain. The terrain, the landscape stays the same. Year after year, year in, year out. Crooked places still crooked. Valleys still not lifted up. Mountains still high, getting even higher. Hills have all their idols on them. The terrain is still rough. Preaching is something we respond to. The implication of it is on my heart and how I respond. We know the parable of the saw. I'm not even going to go into it. But it's the land that determines whether the seed actually bears its fruit or not. The text goes on to say, in verse 5, the glory of the Lord, when this happens, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. When the way is straight, the glory of the Lord is revealed. There are things God wants to do in and through your life. Like the God of the Bible, God of heaven, creator of the heavens. He wants to do things in and through your life. He wants to be glorified for your life. And if, if, and if in response to his word, valleys can be lifted. You actually believe God, man. Now, you know, God can use my life, man. I'm, I, I'm 100% convinced. I, I believe it. I hear messages about God using and, and, and reaching the world. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's my point. That's, I, I, I'm completely. So if in response to his word, mountains can be laid low. We can humble ourselves and put God on the throne of our hearts. If the crooked places, in response to his word, if the crooked places could be made straight and we repent from our sins. If the rough places in response to his word can be made smooth and we will become consistent and faithful in every area of our lives. And Jesus truly is Lord over all. And I believe that he will be glorified. His way would be made straight. 
of all the preparations God could have made. Here's one, a voice crying in the wilderness. P people make more preparations to get married. People make more preparations for their birthday. He says, I just need a voice. I need a voice crying in the wilderness. That's it. Let him preach. Let him keep preaching. Let him keep preaching. Let him keep preaching. Let him keep preaching. And now my glory will be revealed. There was a time I was uh, driving up Chapel Ash. It was coming up at the time, Chapel Ash. And then it's like this police car came and it swung around in front of these cars. And then all these bikes, police bikes come. Man drops off the bike. Stop! Stop! And then like, people have to stop and all of that. And then they just literally just locked off the whole place. Even we were going the opposite way. We couldn't even go. We had to stop as well. Everyone. And then I saw this, these, these like three, four cars, man. I mean, bikes. And these brothers were driving aggressively. Like, revving and all of that. What the heck is this, man? And so they're going, two of them. And then I see a Range Rover go past. And then I see some motorbikes go past. And then as soon as that car, the police are like, all right, all right, guys, all right, come on. And then, and, then, and, then, and they were off. And so I was like, what, what was that? And so I, I was thinking, nah, man, this must have been someone, something, someone, someone. Come on, man, you can't just be like. And so I went there and I found out it was William and Kate, Princess and Princess of Wales, amen. And so they were going to the way, the way youth center. And it's crazy, man, how these things come back to your mind. And I was thinking, you know what they were doing? They were making the way straight. They're like, nothing is getting in our way. They stopped the whole place, you know. I don't care. You Uber, stay where you are. Your, 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 your DPT, you got parcels drop, we don't care. Your family, you're trying to get somewhere, we don't business. Everyone stop it because we need to make the way straight. For a prince and a princess to go to a youth club. <laughs> Think about it. That's what that was for. I consider that and I think, how much more should you and I desire for the way to be made straight for the king of kings to fulfill his purpose in our lives? How much more should we be willing to humble ourselves? No, 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 no. my pride is not getting in the way. Jesus wants to do something, I'll humble myself. Hey, you think this sin, this sin here that wants to destroy my life, if I'm not going to hold on to you, no, no, I'm getting things right. Why? Because I want God to have his way. And don't we pray that? Lord, have your way. That's our prayer, right? Well, if you want him to have his way, sometimes there's, there's idols. I'm prioritizing all these things above God. No, 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 you all need to come down. Come down. God is first in my life because I continually pray, have your way, Lord. The voice, of the, um, the voice in the wilderness comes to make his way straight in the desert. Valleys are lifted. I'm going to believe God. Believe God, man. Hey, his word says it, man. Hey, I love that scripture. Not many wise, man. Hey, but God can use my life. He's chosen the weak things uh, to confound the strong, man. He's chosen the foolish thing to confound the wise. Sorry. This, this God, can, God can use you. But you've got to believe it. Let the valleys be exalted. Let the rough terrain be made smooth before the Lord. There's things, yeah, I'm doing good and I can just lean into that. But there's, I know, there's other areas, man. Well, God, now I'm praying to this. I'm going to try and work on this, man. I'm going to ask for God's grace concerning this. Uh, because I want the way to be made straight. I want God to have his way. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship. Ah, oh, he's working on us, church. Created in Christ Jesus for good works. It is good things that he wants us to do, which he prepared beforehand. That we should, the key word is should, walk in them. There's things God has prepared that he wants you to, you should be walking in them. The text says, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway of our God. For the purpose that the glory would be revealed. God wants to do great and things in and through your life. Don't care what you think, take what, his word of, what, what the word of God says. And his word is proclaimed so he can change and shift the terrain. That his, it's the whole idea is like a king is coming in and they, they're similar to that picture I gave and they just clear out, clear out, clear out, clear out, clear out. You know, they've got crowds on there so the king can just come and pass through so he can have his way. Don't know about you, I want God to have his way in my life. 
if you want God to have his way in your life, then I'm saying today and, and from here on out, man, you allow him to adjust the terrain of your heart and of your life and of your person so he can be glorified. He prepares his way. Let's bow our heads. Let's close.